Hey guys, Case Food Top Branch. Today we're gonna to be cutting dead and hazardous trees. Let's go. Okay guys, we got a big tooth aspen. Got a little bit of a lean away from a shed, which is perfect. So uh, we're uh, gonna try and put it down this stone wall right here. Dead trees, they're not gonna hinge quite as right. Um, so a lot of times the hinge will end up breaking as soon as it starts to go. So if we can get it to st kind of start going in the direction we want it to go, then it has a higher chance of going that way. Also, we get a little barbed wire in here as well, so we're going to cut the tree a little higher. Cutting high is usually uh, kind of sometimes precarious just because you're at level with the, with the chainsaw. So be very careful when you do that if you can. Try and put yourself on a ladder or something like that so something happens. There's a little bit of shelving mushroom and stuff going on here, so there's a little bit of rot that's happened which means my hinge should be just a hair bigger, so that way uh, I got some more control of the tree. As soon as it gets small, it will want to break. I'm um, gonna do our face cut and uh, put our wedges in and try and send it backwards, so let's see what happens. Any dead trees, the outside of the tree is gonna be a little bit more rotten than the inside, because it takes time for the rot to go from outside to inside, so your hinges try to just go just a hair deeper, so that way you have good healthy wood, basically. Bore into it, establish our hinge, and then uh, put our wedges into it and just do the uh, typical uh, typical plunge cut, not necessarily the palm tree cut because I want to keep as much of the hinge as possible. So let's go. quite a bit of lean kind of the direction I don't want it to go so I ended up putting a, what they call a double hinge on this side it adds twice the width of the hinge but it allows the tree to bend without breaking it um, thanks logger Wade uh, for showing us that we're gonna do a tutorial on how to do it but uh, just gonna finish getting my hinge the way it needs to be put some wedges in and send her home <laughs> When you're hammering it, go nice and slow, nice and easy. With the dead tree, we have dead limbs up there, so be on the watch, ready to run. Keep Make sure you get your uh, your escape routes planned on, ready to go, and uh, do it as safely as possible, please. Dead trees, they can also split really easy because they're dry. Just be very careful of that. That's what they call barbaturing. That's why boring it's really important sometimes. They're probably actually just gonna touch my face just a hair. There, went exactly where we wanted to go. Left your hinge on the big side. I got a little bit of fiber pole, which is perfect. So that means the tree was actually really strong and the wood was nice and sound. So he could still use it for firewood. So on to the next one. Still good to be back. Welcome back, buddy. We missed you. You ready, Tracy? Okay, next one. Uh a uh, nice dead ash. So we're first gonna do our hazard check. We know we have some barbed wire in it, but when we check it out, we have actually a pretty good size uh, limb that we need to take down first. So our limb is maybe connected up top, hard to tell, but it's touching the ground over here. So we're gonna go as far away from the dangerous end up top as possible. We're gonna go start whittling this way and trying to get the whole thing to get settled and get against the trunk of the tree. So basically we're gonna start at this far end Cut a couple pieces off and go nice and easy to see uh, what this what this broken branch is going to do, so we can get that down. Because if we fell the tree, that would end up hitting us or, or being in our way for our escape route. So let's let's get this uh, taken care of, and then we're going to talk about felling the tree. Hey guys, so we got two limbs right here. We're going to cut one of them. One of them's not touching the ground, so we don't have to worry about that one too much. This one right here is the one that is we're going to cut first. We're going to do some nice undercuts on it, go, so it can it can go down nice and easy and start slowly chunking it until we get the top kind of dislodged and be ready to run at any time. Tackle this tree, exact same thing we did over here. Um, an ash tree, it's got plenty of lean forward, so 
I'm gonna make my face just coming through the back, nice, slow, and easy. And uh, it's wider than my bar is, so I'm gonna have to do on both sides. So I'm gonna end on my escape route. And my escape route is gonna be kind of towards the building. So we're gonna start on the uphill side of the tree and end on the downhill side. Let's get it done. Nice shallow face so that way when it starts to go it's going to end up breaking his hinge and lay a little bit more flat. If you go this side we can see kind of the culprit of why this thing died. These uh, horizontal lines are the trails that are made by the emerald ash borer. So most likely this was a sick tree and the emerald ash borer ended up uh, pouring into it and eating the flow themselves and that's kind of what probably put this tree uh, was the final straw that broke this tree's back. So let's uh, Go the other side, do our plunge cut, come right around the back side, and uh, put it on the ground. Dead trees aren't going to plunge quite as easy, so I'm, when I'm plunging into it, I'm going to plunge instead of going this way and having it so it walks to my hinge, I'm going to plunge this way, so that way if it does shatter a little bit, it goes to my back cut, which is okay. I can have it go that way as far as I want, but if I'm plunging in it and my tip, the top of my uh, chain is pointed towards this, it could walk and make my hinge too small. Now let's go look at his stuff. Perfect. <laughs> so I had a nice flat hinge all the way around and I wanted to get some speed. So I ended up cutting the center right here. So that way, if this was a little too tight, it wouldn't uh, stop the tree for any reason. So that's why I kind of got this at the very last second. That's sometimes what you can do uh, to make the tree have some more speed so it goes exactly where you want to go. One more to do. So this tree, doesn't have quite the distance that I need or where it's gonna be able to make it and not hit these trees. So it has, it has two big co-dominant stems. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna have the co-dominant stems go on both sides of this popple up here. That way, uh, it's only gonna smash the little yellow birch. So if I go, if I go this way, it's gonna grab a lot of the stems of the maple and it's not gonna feel too good because there's one of them that's a little too tall and it's gonna end up not feeling too good. Yeah, this is decision is decision. We're gonna get the, the right side leader to hug the edge of the popple, and then this leader right here, we're gonna try and go between the smaller trees. That way it, it creates a nice little path for these two places to go. It's gonna be tight, so we're gonna see if we can do it. One of the most important things is having a safe place for the trees to go. So that way it's it's gonna be, it's not gonna make a mess for in the future time, plus it's not gonna be a hazard for when you're cutting it up, get your bar, your bar pinched or have the tree roll on you for any reason. So that's why we're trying to get it so that way it hits the ground so it's easy to manage. As soon as it's in the air, that's when it's a problem and that's when it can be dangerous and that's when people get killed. <laughs> this line here that was my don't go below line so that way I don't hit any of my wire staples when I do my back cut and I, I cut a little bit of this face right here so that way I could have a double hinge um, it allows me so if the tree does get stuck I can cut one side of it and have it roll on the stump to come down and to be safe so now we're gonna plunge into it because it's got some lean and then I'm gonna go out my back cut so that way it doesn't have a chance to barbecue and it gets some speed so I can make it through the canopy of the other trees
this side was a little high because just because I, I uh, didn't get all the way around the side for it to end up falling and I wonder why my chain when I was boring into it it bounced a little tiny bit and when you look right there there's a little bit of steel that was an old fence post wire staple probably or something like that um, thought I was high enough but not quite oh well did, did the job just fine and uh, now it's time to block this girl up uh -huh. Well guys, that's it for today. Um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something about doing some hazardous trees. Top five things to kind of consider guys is always look for your hazards because these guys, there's widow makers in them, the wind and the, the weather always do something to them. Uh, make sure that the tree is kind of leaning towards where you want it to go. Trees don't like to go, the dead trees don't like to go the way that they go, especially if you don't have a line or something like in them because the fibers don't bend the way they're supposed to do it. Uh, Keep your hinge just a hair bigger on, on a lot of the dead trees just so that way uh, you have a little bit more control because you can always cut it some more, especially if there's a little bit of a side lean or anything like that. Uh, or uh, I like to bore them so that way they don't uh, they don't end up uh, barber chairing for any reason. And don't trust them is number is the last but not certainly not least. Uh, don't trust them, they're not gonna go the way that you think they're gonna go a lot of times and uh, just be ready to run. So thanks guys. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, uh, check out our shorts channel if you, if you haven't had enough, uh, enough top branch or you're short on time. Put your comments below to, uh, so we can make videos of what you guys uh, are looking for so we can help you guys out and save you some dough.